All right, everybody, welcome once again to Monica at Home, Christian Porn Star Edition number two. My name's Alexandra, better known as Monica Foster from my official website, www.monicaf.com, but also the two websites now that I've created specifically for these broadcasts, the first one and the older one, which is www.monicaathome.com, and the newer one, which is www.christianpornstar.com. Now, I know a lot of you might think to yourself, well, God, that's kind of a contradiction. Christian and porn star, how are you going to mesh those two together? Well, I think you can. Because one thing that I noticed when I worked out in Los Angeles in the porn industry, I feel like a lot of porn professionals really try to either keep you in or just destroy your entire concept of self-worth if you're an adult entertainer by making you feel like you are not good enough for God, Jesus Christ, Allah, a higher power, the light, any of that. Um, quite a few people in that industry actually are Satanists. They will say that they're atheists, but they're always running around saying, I'm team Satan, go devil, go Lucifer. They got all these weird ass tattoos all over themselves. So um, I, I just don't, I want to spread a message to other adult entertainers, whether you're in or you're contemplating leaving or uh, maybe you're just thinking about going to adult entertainment. You don't have to go into adult entertainment with the mindset that you are turning your back on anything good of the light of God, of Jesus, of anything positive. You can go in and you can work within that industry with the mindset that this is something that you're doing right now, but at some point in time, you will return to the source, which is, in my view, God and Jesus. It doesn't have to be Jesus, but I think you should give Jesus a chance. Um, it also does make it a lot better and easier for you to leave adult entertainment if you choose to do so, whether it just be from in front of the camera to behind the camera or just out of the industry altogether, if you do have a good spiritual base. I feel like the spiritual base that I have and that I was actually reintroduced to by somebody who is being um, adamantly attacked by quite a few people who claim to be for free speech, but in actuality they're not. If, if I wasn't reintroduced to my spiritual base, then I feel like it would have been much more difficult for me to get out of LA from around the very negative and destructive environment and people that were surrounding me and I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now trying to encourage many other people out there if you are someone who's um, working in the adult entertainment field to try to return to God because right now in this world that we live in in my opinion there's just there's such it, our society is becoming so much more polarized between good and evil some people will be like, oh, that's just in your head, you're getting older, you're, you're just having a spiritual awakening. Not necessarily. I think that a lot of people are noticing this, whether they are spiritual or not, because it's just a fact. I feel like um, right now there are a lot of negative forces out there trying to pull God's children away from the light and either get them to permanently not ever return or maybe get them to commit suicide before they can get back to God. I feel like that is almost what happened to me. What happened to me when it came to a lot of the demonic forces within the LA porn industry, I was basically gang stalked and so were my family members. I wasn't the first person that this has happened to. There's a woman by the name of her stage name was Desi Fox. She has an excellent blog and I'll put the URL on here after I edit this broadcast. It is called pornintheValley.com. Everything that happened to me and my family basically happened to her, but magnified. And it, nobody ever brought any attention to it because people were doing this to her, but they didn't want anyone to know. And it almost drove her over the edge as well. I feel like what's happening with Shelly Lubin and the Pink Cross right now, I feel like she's being habitually gang stalked by people who are attached to the FSC, which is Free Speech Coalition. And I said in my most recent broadcast of Monica at Home, how are you going to be someone who is claiming that you're for free speech and freedom of expression when you're trying to stifle the word of the Bible? Because from what I can see and from what I know, Shelley Lubin is trying to get the word of the Bible 
into the porn industry and they're just keeping her out, keeping her out, but yet and still they're claiming that they're for free speech. Yeah. So we'll talk about that a little bit more later too. But let me go ahead and take a break now and go to the chat. Okay, go to gang stalking is real dot blogspot dot com. Also go to www.targetedindividuals.com. Basically what gang stalking is, it's when people will harass you online, or in, in my case, in my real life too, just to the extent that it's hard for you to report it to the law. It's also called organized stalking. It's when, let's say that you're somebody who's outspoken like myself, and you start telling people about something that you experience in a certain industry. It doesn't have to have to do with the porn industry. There have been people who have been engineers, doctors, attorneys, government officials. Anytime that you are, quote unquote, a whistleblower, you see something going wrong in an organization or a corporation or a business, and you talk about it, sometimes people with money don't like that, and they will try to shut you up. You know what? Religion has always been in the porn industry, but in a negative way. I feel like people have mocked religion in the porn industry for quite some time. I mean, you have porn movies with young girls dressing up as Catholic schoolgirls having sex with a preacher. You're telling me that that's not acknowledging religion in porn, but in a negative way? Yeah. Um, look at the names of a lot of the porn companies. Evil Angel. That's not acknowledging religion. Think about it. Really think about those things, okay? Exactly, Hawkeye in New Jersey. Someone in the chat room just said, Jesus Christ's best friend was Mary Magdalene. Speaks volumes to me. Yeah, me too. Me too. That's what I'm saying. If you're an adult entertainer, I feel like you really need to open your eyes and open your heart and realize, hey, I'm doing this, but that doesn't necessarily mean that my actions come from a dark and demonic place. You are good enough for God and Jesus Christ if you work in the adult entertainment industry. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you are not. People will try to separate you from the light. If you are someone who already has a strong spiritual foundation, they also want to keep you in porn because it's easier to keep somebody in porn if they tell them or they try to sway them through guilt through despair, through feeling depressed, through um, shame, that somehow they cannot return to where they came from. Yeah. Yeah, and I do believe that there could be such a thing as Christian porn. And I'll talk about that a little bit later too. Think about it. you got Christian music. Why can't you not have Christian porn? I think you can. Controversial, perhaps, but that's just me. And the first thing I want to talk about, this doesn't really necessarily have to do with porn news, but it kind of does considering who's involved. Now, I'm sure that many of you are very familiar with what's going on with the whole Herman Cain, Sharon Bialik thing. That, you know, the Herman Cain, he's a Republican guy. He's black. He's real chocolate. He's fabulous. I'm not a Republican, though. I am Team Obama. But um, you got this Sharon Bialik. Now, I haven't checked on the news headlines today, so if anything else happened in regards to it today, somebody let me know. But um, one thing I noticed about this entire news story is that it does have a porn connection. And you might wonder, how in the world is there a porn connection with this whole Sharon Bialik um, sexual harassment accusation against Herman Cain? Well, being that you have Gloria Allred involved, there is. Here's the thing about Gloria Allred. Gloria Allred refers quite a few of the women that she represents. Um, she's referred the Tiger Woods mistress, for example, to uh, this woman, I think, uh, I'm not sure who else. You have to look at the website yourself. 
But the thing about Gloria Allred is that she's good friends with this woman by the name of Gina Rodri Rodriguez, a.k.a. Demi D'Elia of D&D Entertainment. Now, what's D&D Entertainment, you might ask? Look it up. I have it linked up on PornNewsToday.com. But D&D Entertainment is known as a uh, agency for celebrity mistresses. Many of those celebrity mistresses do have porn connections, such as Tila Tequila, Jocelyn James. Just look at the website yourself. But um, now you got the Sharon Bialik, who to me really does look like uh, she steps straight off a naughty America porn set, considering the hair, the makeup, the boobies, all that kind of stuff. Not to say that if you have that look, you were in a naughty America porn, but you know. Anyway, um, she's cl she claimed on the Pierce Morgan show, I think that, wait, what is his show on CNN, that she's not planning on making any money at all off of this entire situation. But I think only time will tell on that one. The reason I say that is because I have to question whether or not Gloria Allred has introduced Sharon to Gina Rodriguez as of yet. And will she at some point pop up on a D&D &D Entertainment website? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's talk about this. You got a lot of um, black Christians saying that if Kim Kardashian is cast in Tyler, Terry, Tyler Perry's newest movie, The Marriage Counselor, they're going to boycott it. Yes, and this is a story that is from the Huffington Post, but of course I posted it on Porn News today. And let me just read to you what some of his fans had to say. They said, Mr. Perry, as much as we are, as much as we, the middle class black folks, love you, I have made up my mind on your next movie. Me and my wife and children will not be supporting you on this one. You are way too classy to have this untalented lady named Kim Kardashian in your film. She only uses our black brothers for money and sex. What kind of role model is she? And again, sir, why? All the black actresses out there needing work and you choose this negative person. How sad. And what a slap in our face as black people. But I guess because you have your millions of dollars now, you don't care how the people, how we the people feel after we are the ones who helped you make these millions. Wow, do the right thing and pull her from the movie, please, Mr. Perry. That's what someone had to say that the Huffington Post <laughs> quoted. Um, I think that this is an interesting story, really, because um, it really, what's going on with this is one of the reasons also that I decided to put ChristianPornStar.com together because like I just said, I do believe that there is a way to have Christian approved porn. Do I think that this should be the only kind of porn out there? No. No, I think that, you know, people can do whatever they want. But I do think that the porn industry needs to be cleaned up. And dare I say it. I think it might need to become segregated. Not racially segregated. That's already been going on. <laughs> the porn industry is about, it's, it's probably the most segregated industry out there when I really think about it. But I think it needs to be spiritually segregated. And I'm just the person to do it. And I will. I th I'm going to create something called Christian porn. I think that there needs to be um, guidelines as to what Christian porn is, and I have some ideas. I will, <laughs> and, it's, and I'm not being funny with this, I'm being serious. I'll present you guys with my Christian porn guidelines on my next broadcast. I guess I could call them CPS commandments. Because I do believe that 
my idea for this is coming from something outside of myself. I'm not sure what though. But uh, yeah, I think that it is time to clean up porn a little bit. It needs to be segregated spiritually. That way people who have my mindset and who only want to watch positive sexual images that are not uh, degrading to women or men and that are not hurting the children, maybe people like that would enjoy having Christian porn star approved porn out there to watch. That way you know what to watch. It could be labeled, you know, I put a little thing up that says Christian porn star approved. Boop. There you go. There you go. Someone asked me if I've lost my damn mind. No, not at all. Mm -mm. I'm serious. I think it's a great idea. I don't care if you think it's a bad idea. I think it's a great idea because just like you have Christian music out there, like a lot of, like there's some Christians out there who would say all rock and roll and pop is the devil's work. And you know it. There's a lot, but that's why you have Christian approved music. And that's why it is time to have Christian approved pornography. Like I said, I will make guidelines as to what is Christian approved. I'm going to make a list and I will check it twice as far as um, what porn studios are naughty or nice. And uh, I'm, I'm going to put the list on ChristianPornStar.com. Like, for example, Vivid Entertainment, in my view, they are not Christian porn star approved. And I'm going to tell you why. And that relates to a very big news story going on right now, which has to do with Little Miss Sasha Gray. I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but if you go to uh, www.pornnewstoday.com, you'll see the story. And I'm going to tell you my thoughts on it. And my thoughts will probably surprise you quite so quite a bit. Now, the whole thing going on with Sasha Gray right now is that she signed up for this uh, volunteer reading program to where celebrities or models or famous people, whatever, they, they go out to these elementary schools that probably are underfunded or um, maybe are just part of the program and they read to children on a voluntary basis. It sounds very nice, right? Here's where the controversy comes in. Sasha Gray. I don't know if any of you out there who are watching me are familiar with who Sasha Gray is, but if you're familiar with porn at all, you are. Sasha Gray. I don't know how old she is right now. I believe when she got into porn, she was like 18 years old or something. Little white girl. She looks kind of like a Vulcan to me with her little eyebrows. Pretty girl, though. Anyway, she volunteered to read to the children. Not a good idea. And I'm somebody who is an ex-porn star, current webcam girl, saying this. I'm sure a lot of my adult industry peers will say, Oh, Monica, how dare you just say that Sasha Gray is trying to do a good thing and clean up her life. Well, she's not. She's doing it for attention, for one thing. I believe it was all a, all a publicity stunt. Do I believe that she really cares about the children? Maybe. Maybe. But if she did care about the children, maybe at this point in her career, she needs to just donate some money to helping the children and not actually have any kind of physical interaction with the children because there is absolutely no reason for her to have any kind of contact with children at this stage in her career. Being that it, it has been a couple of years since she shot porn, but it's not the fact that she was a porn star it is, well, for one thing, it's the type of porn star she was. Some people are going to say, oh, you're a hypocrite. Porn star is a porn star. No. No. That's why I do think that it's time to segregate porn a little bit, spiritually. Being that it's been segregated racially for quite some time. And maybe label some porn stars as Christian porn star approved. 
and other porn stars, no, not Christian porn star approved. Because Sasha Gray, is she Christian porn star approved in my opinion? No, absolutely not. I'm sure she's a lovely young girl in her life. I have no idea. I've never met her. I have no desire to. But um, I believe that she has been used as a recruitment me me uh, I can't even talk. A recruitment mechanism of young people into porn for quite some time, whether she's been aware of it or not. I remember a few years ago when she was on the Tyra Banks show trying to justify what she was doing. And I have to go back and talk about the type of porn star she is also. Because some people would argue, they would be like, oh, well, you know, you got Jenna Jameson and she's around kids. Well, you know what, for one thing, Jenna Jameson has kids. So there's an actual feasible reason for her to ever be at an elementary school. Sasha Gray, she doesn't have any kids. So I don't understand why she was at school. Also, if you look at those pictures of Sasha Gray with those children, there's not one white child in that classroom. That's at an underprivileged minority, predominantly minority school. In my opinion, if she gets a green light on this, it's saying, well, it's okay for a white porn star or a white adult entertainer to have influence over young children if they're underprivileged, underprivileged or in a predominantly minority setting. But you know damn well that you would never see Sasha Gray at an affluent Los Angeles elementary school. And if people want to give her the green light, I want to see her pull that same kind of stunt in Beverly Hills. In fact, not just that, I want to see Mr. Marcus read to children and Pinky. I want Mr. Marcus and Pinky to be invited to read to the children in a predominantly white school. And I want it to happen soon, if Sasha Gray gets a green light. Because I do believe that Sasha Gray does not need to be around any children because I feel like the only adults that need to be brought into any kind of educational setting needs to be adults who are good role models. I'm not saying that you can't clean up your life once you've worked in adult entertainment. But if you are primarily known for having a dick in your butt and then having it shoved in your mouth or for being an escort, because she has done mainstream work to where she's played an escort, um, And let's see what kind of porn she's done. And also, let's look at the quantity of the porn. Now, she's done, it looks like 157 titles. That doesn't necessarily mean 157 scenes. But we'll say she did somewhere in 100, okay? But let's see. Uh, let's see what the worst kind of scene is that she ever did. I'm looking. I'm seeing a lot of non-sex roles, lots of girl, girl only. Um, hmm. I don't think she ever did any anal. And I'm sorry, a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this. But when I say this, I'm not anti-gay. I'm talking about straight Christian porn because I'm straight. I'm a Christian, so that's all I can talk on. But, um... Do I think anal sex is something that should be Christian porn star, star approved? No. No. Now, I can't say that for the gay sex because I'm not gay, I'm not a man, I don't know. I think that somebody probably needs to start gaychristianpornstar.com to address that. Um, I think gays can be Christians for sure. But when I make my CPS commandments, Unfortunately, anal sex is not something that will be Christian porn star approved. 
So could Joe Jameson be a Christian porn star in my view? Yeah, I think so. I think so, because I'm not seeing anything here that I personally do not approve of. But now let's look at Sasha Gray. So we got Jenna Jameson, about 157 titles, primarily lesbian, few boy girl, I don't see any anal. Now, if she ever did anal in her career, correct me later when I'm done checking on this. But now let's look at Sasha Gray. See what she's been up to. Mm -hmm. Ooh, 238 titles. Quite a lot of movies for an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old. Gosh. Let's see here. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, um, yeah, she does. She, Sasha Gray definitely didn't need to read to any children, and she doesn't need to continue. No, I think it would be good for her to possibly educate teenagers who are considering entering porn that that might not necessarily be the correct road, especially for one so young. I think it would be great if she's looking to revamp her image to say something along the lines of, gosh, I think that the porn industry needs to raise the age limit from 18 to 21, because it does, it will cut out a lot of um the marketing of underage sex i mean those are those are some things i think sasha gray could do but considering i mean i'm just looking at this listing of the things that she's done because even though she does like this clean little white girl like oh i'm sasha gray <laughs> no, no 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 she's done something called anal facial swallow ass to mouth Lots of anal facial swallows. Ass to mouth anal interracial. I mean, I'm wondering if like TMZ even looked into this as much as they're promoting her. Are they trying to get young girls to try to follow in Sasha Gray's footsteps? Hmm. Wow. Anal facial double penetration. Swallow ass to mouth. Wow, lots of ass to mouth. Lots and lots of ass to mouth. I don't think any of this is funny. I think it's horrible. I think it's horrible what our world is coming to. And I think the only way that we can protect young people, and I'm not just talking about like first graders, I'm talking about teenagers. I mean, there's, there's been a lot of news stories recently about how um, a lot of young men are coming forward saying that they are sexually dysfunctional because they're addicted to porn and they can't help but be addicted to porn considering all the free porn that's just put out there by the porn industry. And a lot of it is such extreme porn that these young men are not able to be turned on via normal sex anymore. It's insane. That's why it's time, it's time to tone it down a little bit. Tone it down. Tone it down. Take take a lot of this Satan and demonic stuff out of porn. We can do that. It's not hard. We have to save the children from the demonic porn people like Sasha Gray. Because that girl, I think she's evil. I don't care what anyone says. People are like, you're mean. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Especially with those eyebrows. Something, something's wrong. 
Let's see, what else can we talk about in porn news before I get to the main thing I want to talk about today? Well, there's been, there's just been all these child porn issues and child rape even in the news as of late. You know, you got that Penn State thing going on. That's a shame. I think that a lot of, um, I, I think, I, I don't know why a lot of you are going to think that I'm wrong, but I think the whole Penn State thing actually had to do with, um, some interlacing with some, um, satanic cult activity because young boys are prime targets for a lot of satanic cult ritual abuse. There's more people involved in that Ordo Templi Orientis, which I have touched on on many Monica at Home broadcasts, that OTO. There are more people involved in that who are affluent people than we'll ever know of. And many of these people do work in the entertainment industry and are attached to the porn industry. That whole porn WikiLeaks thing that I went through, the guy who was financially funding that, is a guy by the name of Michael Tierney who believes that he is a reincarnated Aleister Crowley. It's on his blog. You see, that's what I'm saying. There's a big problem. There has to be a Christian porn star movement right now. Because you have all these Satanists in the porn industry who are reaching their tendrils into mainstream land with their beliefs. And much of their beliefs do center around abusing children. They're trying to get to children. What a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of porn professionals are pedophiles or they have pedophilic tendencies. If I tell you something, do you promise to keep it a secret? Sure. What is it? Yesterday? My sister Sandra thought she was alone for the day, but I was upstairs watching. She did some really crazy things. Crazy things? Like what? Do you want me to show you? Yes. Okay, Rudy. You have to take off your clothes first. I'm not going to take off my clothes unless you take off your clothes too. Okay, we'll take them off together. Let me tell you how it's going to be. It's going to be like this one day. You're going to shoot like that. That's what's going to Are you going to wait for the last day to do that? Yes. Well, really? I'll do it before I, 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 I do want a banger, though. Yeah. How did you get cast in this movie? What did you have to do? I didn't have to do anything. What did you willingly do? Did you watch the Cosby's a lot as a kid growing up? I thought I should be honest. What's that? I didn't you like didn't? it. You didn't like it? Don't say that. Well... Okay, I'll lie. I loved it. I watched it all the time. Now, did you have to actually watch like, any of the episodes to get in the character? Yeah, they gave us CDs. They to, did. Uh, you know, get their man mannerisms down. Because you're pretty good at that. You've got the little girl thing down, and you kind of... It's not really Rudy, because if you watch the show, at least the few episodes that I've watched, uh -huh. she really doesn't have, like... Like, you know, the twins, the Olsen twins, they always had, like, you got it, dude. She really didn't have anything to shoot. She didn't have a catchphrase. No, she was just a little kid. So. Yeah, she was just a sm snotty little kid, huh? Yeah, I just act like my nieces, because I have nieces that are small. So you just small, pick up the snotty it's really little kid It's not a really thing, it's just a little kid thing, yeah. There you go. That works, I guess. But um, you'll see that some porn producers may have pedophilic tendencies and that needs to be addressed and it needs to be um, looked at because that is something that is definitely not Christian porn star approved in my book. Because one thing you don't do ever is mess with the children. It should not even be in your mind. 
If it's in your mind, you are a sicko. If you're attracted to anything having to do with little girls in little white tights, sitting on a rocking horse in a pink bedroom, something is wrong with you. And that should not be depicted in porn at all. Too much porn depicts young girls. That's why, I mean, I think if Sasha Gray really does want to clean up her act, she needs to go public with the fact that the age limit needs to be raised from 18 to 21. Because too many girls entering the porn industry look far too young, in my opinion. Yeah, it might be a big seller, but that doesn't make it right. I feel like if that's what you have to resort to in order to sell your adult content, then maybe you're not very talented and maybe you shouldn't even be making adult content because really you're just feeding into one of the biggest problems in Hollywood, which is pedophilia. Corey Feldman has no idea what it's like not to be famous. He was just three years old in this McDonald's commercial. McDonald's gift certificates. I literally was famous before I knew my own name. His roles defined the 80s. Goonies. This was my dream, my wish. Stand by me. You call my dad a loony again, and I'll kill you. License to drive. The only difference between you and that greaseball is that he has a license and you don't. <laughs> Films that propelled him into the spotlight for his entire youth. But being famous so young, he says, caused serious damage to him and his friends. Do you feel like you missed out on a normal childhood? <laughs> what childhood? <laughs> I don't know what that means. A lost childhood and a loss of innocence. He blames the adults, not just those looking to profit from charming children, but also some with far more sinister motives. I can tell you that the number one problem in Hollywood was and is and always will be pedophilia.